Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about my quilting journey and life in a northern town. Show notes can be found at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com. Please leave a comment and we can continue the conversation online. My name is Vicki and I'll be your hostess. Hello, this is Vicki. Wishing everyone a happy new year. We've now been into January 2017 for over a week, and I have to say I feel like I'm getting a lot done. I did have time off between Christmas and New Year's, and all of the activities and things that we did are listed on a previous blog post, but needless to say, it was a wonderful time to just relax, visit with people, and get things done. I was able to complete a shawl, the black bamboo pop with the ombre effect teals was done. I was able to finish up quilting um, quilts that were deadlined for customers. And I did some sewing on a very, very modern, wonky log type of look Um They are one row all the way around a asymmetrical shape log cabin style block. I'm going to make some charity quilts for children with cancer. That is Holly's um, idea and wanted to have some, at least one quilt done and maybe some tops well underway so that when the process for submitting quilts to the children's hospital is in place that we'll have some there. Oh, and it is mystery time of the year. Now, I'm doing Pat Sloan's monthly mystery block. This year, her theme is children's library. She picks a theme and each month explores that theme and then has a fun block that's based on the theme. Now, this time, I'm choosing to use a very traditional block or fat quarter pack. I do some testing for Quilt Maker 100 magazine, and that was payment for my helping them out was a fat bundle package, and it's very traditional with browns, tans, and reds. The fat quarter bundle is named Songbird Gathering by Moda. It's really a great traditional color palette, and the first block is called Mother Goose in Pat Sloan's Children's Library series, so I made that today. You know, I don't know why every once in a while when I do half square triangles and you trim them down that the points get lost in the setting. And I had a couple of clip points in this. I'm not going to remake the block. I might make another one just for fun because it looks like the overall number of blocks in this particular quilt is 10 or 9. And I might want to make it a little bit bigger with more piece blocks. She's also doing a winter solstice challenge with um, simple blocks that she's putting out about a couple times a month. And there are three of those out. And this fat quarter bundle is pretty big. So I may, instead of making 12 inch blocks for the solstice, scale it down to six inch blocks and put them all together in a big uh, hodgepodge craziness, uh, jigsaw puzzle like sampler. We'll see. Um, Winter months, I have a little more time on my hands. I currently have only one customer quilt. And that means I can do some of my own, which I'm pretty excited to do. I have to say true confession. I went through and I counted the number of tops that are mine. And I thought there were a lot more than there are. There are four of my quilts that need to be quilted. And I have one customer quilt. And I also have about three tops that my mom made that she did not want to quilt. And I want to practice doing some wild and crazy things on them. So I think this is the winter while I'm having a little break that I'm going to do my my quilt tops and have time to practice some really cool things on quilt tops that weren't loved anymore. I have one quilt to bind. And that particular quilt, I I think I'm going to try to enter into a quilt show. It is my Woven's Ribbon Quilt. I'll put a picture of it on show notes. So those are my true confessions. Um, I have probably eight tops total to do of my own. And by the time I get to the bottom of the stack, I'm sure I'll have a few more. 
in that stack is last year's Pat Sloan Mystery Challenge called Secret Garden. I have a orphan block farmer's wife top plus some leftover Civil War diary quilts that I set in a large setting that I saw with um, Orifil Designers a couple years ago. They have a large chunky border around it and then they're all put together. Um, There'll be a picture of that top on the show notes too. I also had the Tula Pink um, tiles. That quilt is done. And the Birds in the Air. Um, one that we did last year. And that one will probably go on second because it's smaller and I have no idea what I'm quilting on the other ones, but the birds in the air, I do have an idea. I want to do some straight line quilting with a few interruptions along the way on the straight line with um, circles or squares or triangles and kind of break it up a little bit with those kind of look. But that leads me to a problem I'm having with my long arm frame. It keeps binding in one section. We keep putting a level on it and the table itself seems to be level the rails, though, and one section of the table show that the quilt is, or the machine is being bound. And I finally figured out, after months of this, the rails are sagging in the middle. So I think I'm going to have to raise them up a notch to keep the quilt from binding while the long arm is traveling over it. And that may solve my problem. I'm still going to re-level it, still going to go through and look at the rails because there seems to be some damage to some chipping on the rails of the long arm frame. But those are easily replaced. So after a month or close to a year of messing around with this, cleaning it, talking to people fretting about it, getting really frustrated when I get to that section of the quilt from time to time, because it's, the thing is, it's not consistent. It is consistent, though, with winter. Well, why is that? Because my long arm's on the second floor. It's in my bedroom, and in the winter months, the house gets very cold. It's a 110-year-old house. I do believe that the floors shift and pop, you know, in and out of different places, and just the way the house is set, I think that's what it is. So I'm going to raise it up and also look at the rails, you know, raising them up a notch might help because they're getting old enough. I believe that there's getting sag in the middle and I don't see any way to stiffen that up for the 12, they're 12 feet long and I don't want to buy new rails. When you start getting into buying a lot of different parts for a frame, you almost need to look at buying a new frame. I'm not willing to invest that kind of money in the system at this time. Well, little catching up here on weather. You know, we did ring in the New Year downtown on New Year's Eve. It was a lovely, lovely temperature in the 40s. Um, we had a lot of cold prior to the holidays. Got a lot of snow. In fact, um, I'm looking at the National Weather Service, and they got 80 inches marked down for their location, which is south of town a couple of miles. And in town, we got 60 inches of snow in December. But at Christmas time, it warmed up, and then after Christmas, it rained and we had freezing rain and then it got cold. And this week it's been bitterly cold in the single digits. And he said we have another foot of snow coming. So I'm so looking forward to Twilters Online is a group that you can join. Twilter Gates is the Facebook um, name that you look for in the group. And if you're a quilter, ask to join. They're having a virtual sew-in Saturday because so many of the women live in the southeast of the United States and they're expected to get a foot of snow too. They don't have snow removal like we do. They're going to grind to a halt. Now I'm, we're going to get another foot of snow yeah, we've got, oh, they're saying over 105 inches of snow already this year. And we've got the ability to clean it off the roads. Yeah, it's bad when there's ice underneath it. That's caused several tragedies in every winter. But I also not only have a virtual sew on Saturday, but my 15-person um, group of friends who sew and quilt are getting together Saturday for an all-day sew-in. They're starting at 7.30 in the morning. I don't know if I can get up that early and get out the door with my sewing machine, but I want to get out there pretty early, probably between 8.30, quarter to 9 in that part. And... I've got my projects lined up. 
I want to sew together my Tula Pink 100 of those six inch blocks of the Modern City Sampler. I chose a gray for it to be sashed with and it's going in a straight setting. Oh, and that's done. We'll add that to the list of quilts that will need to be quilted. So I'll take it up to five. And if I have time and if I don't get too tired, my Emeralds quilt, which was the birthday celebration quilt of my 50th birthday last May, I made a quilt that Mary Fonz had published as in her magazine Quilty, as well as it being online. And Emerald is the birthstone of May. That quilt, all 32 blocks are done. And I have to do a non-point setting on it because that's how it is in the pattern. And that's why I fell in love with it. On point might give me a little bit of a challenge. And I think I'm a little bit short on the white setting triangles. So I have to add that up and see where I'm at. So that'll take it up to six of my own. And so it's going to put me really close to nine or ten quilt tops to be quilted over the course of the year. And I would like to get most of them done by May because for some reason I get a lot of quilts starting to come in for my friends to quilt in May through the October season, you know, for Christmas. So I always feel like I'm on a time crunch. Besides, in May, we start Highland Games and doing a little bit of traveling to all the Celtic festivals so my husband can compete in those games. So today is a very cold, cold day. More snow coming. But when it gets this cold, it's about five degrees outside. It's very quiet. There's just not a lot of sound that generates. There's no birds singing, no squirrels scampering through the trees. The only thing you really hear when you walk outside is this really harsh crunching of the snow. I do have to warm my car up pretty early and I'll be working on getting that done in a few minutes before I decide to head to work. And yes, because it's cold and things slow down, activities in some ways slow down, but that's my time to really start knocking out these quilting projects for myself and working on some designs. Um, once I get going on these quilt tops that I mentioned, I may start dabbling in the um, improv curved drunkard's path type of quilt. But right now I'm working on a uh, simpler version with that charity quilt, which is a wonky improv log cabin. That's very simple to do and you can see pictures of it at, on the show notes. I wanted to have a brief discussion about why I let my MQ G membership online. It was an online single membership lapse because I thought it was an okay program. I did watch several of the members webinars over the year, which I thought a couple of them were interesting, but a lot of them were really dry and kind of business-like and reminded me of attending meetings at work, which is not really my thing. And I thought, what am I really getting for this $30 membership, except for the fact that I could enter a quilt into QuiltCon, which is why I took the membership out in the first place. I don't know that QuiltCon is anywhere I will have a quilt in a show, but I thought in the future, if I want to have a quilt in the show, I'll just pay the entry fee because I didn't see the benefit of getting a membership, even though 30 bucks wasn't really that bad of a price. But I'm not a joiner, and this is why, because where's the money going, and what are they doing with it? And there's a lot of controversy out there about the MQG, or Modern Quilt Guild, and, and I don't know the, the whole lot about it. I just know that I have been a quilter for a long time, and I've observed a lot of things over the years. And the one thing that I thought was weird about the Modern Quilt Guild when they started was that all of a sudden, and they cropped up in California with a group of people who are catering to people half my age. And I get it. I mean, it's a good way to get enthusiasm and interest and really, really pumping up younger quilters about a modern aesthetic. 
I think that's great. I love that idea. But then what happened during the course of it was I heard some of the things that people were being told online. They were sharing stories about their quilt not being modern enough for the guild or having uninspired projects. That was a comment that I've heard that were being said. And I thought, that's just mean girls. And it's worse than the quilt police from the 1980s when I was quilting and everything had to be done a certain way and cut a certain way and so a certain way and so many stitches per inch on your hand quilting and I didn't like that quilt police thing. They they were actually turning into being a worse version of that than what it was before and that was why they quote splintered off into their own modern younger hipper group which is fine. I'm not younger. I'm maybe more modern. I'm certainly not hip but what got me was I've been saying all along, like any new parent who has a young child, we all acted, or maybe you do, that that this is a brand new thing that you've just discovered. And there's this magic in having this brand new baby that's the most special and unique and just you're in love with the new baby. Well, that's kind of how I felt this group of people was about modern quilting. I've said before that, you know, Gwen Marston's a Michigan person. Uh, She lives in Michigan. Again, I know she's traveled around, but her books have been in our public library and people have been following her for decades. The exact same aesthetic that they were saying is modern and new and no one else was doing, we've been doing it here for 20 some years. I've been trying to have that aesthetic for quite a long time and several people in my quilt group I actually have taken classes from her and that's the kind of quilts they've been doing for a long long time but when that was brought up it was kind of I don't know poo-pooed by people who were running the group but I did see last year that Gwen was one of the keynote speakers and I was able to see her little sketches in Michigan in a small museum And I missed her speech, but I I watched it online, both at the local museum when she was a keynote speaker about her little sketches, as well as I listened to her when they aired it at QuiltCon. And I thought they were being very gracious and treated her well, because she is not the typical demographic of the group. But that's why I let it go. I thought, you know what, I don't need quilt police in my life and I don't need anyone imposing on me what is modern and what is not because you know what, I am not truly a modern quilter. I am a fusion quilter. I fuse everything, fusing tradition and modern and I fuse experiences in life and I fuse how I am and where I'm at at the moment into making the quilts that I make. So I thought, I can't be true to that um, modern aesthetic because not everything I do is modern and I don't particularly feel like I need to join the club to promote a business or to promote a brand or anything like that. So that's why I didn't join. I do have a group of friends locally that we do challenges and charity quilts and collaborative programs and it's free and we get together in each other's homes and I finally have found a local group of people who are my people. And guess what? I'm the youngest one in the group. They're all my mother's age, not the young 20 some year old um, stereotypical thought of who modern quilters are. See, we're all quilters and we all do our own thing to the beat of our own drummer, so to speak. So I just wanted to make a statement on why I let that go. I don't join any large guilds. We do have a formal guild in town and that's real stuffy and businessy and not my thing. So I haven't joined it. And I think um, I like being a free spirit, freelancer. And if I want to enter a quilt in a show, I'm not going to join the guild just to do it. I will pay the entrance fee and then take a chance. So I just wanted to make a statement about joining. There are benefits to joining a guild if you can find a group of people who are your people. I just happen to have a group that is not a formal guild, nor do we pay dues. We just go places and do things together, and then everyone pays their own way. We um, do support the local guild when they have a quilt show. Unfortunately, they canceled their show this year due to lack of interest and lack of ability to organize it. That's a good benefit to have the power of a lot of people together. But also, I like being a freelancer. That's my style. 
I also wanted to say that um, the MQG put out a statement in an email when I was a member about derivative works and trying to define what modern is and isn't. And it just didn't sit well with me because I felt like it was trying to define something that's in an art process in evolution. And their whole derivative works statement is also another controversial topic. And I just decided... I. Sorry for the interruption there. You got to hear a door opening and me walking on snow and very frigidly cold weather. Did you hear the squeaking of the door and the crunching of the snow? Well, anyway, uh, back to finishing my statement about derivative works. I just didn't feel that I needed to have a definition for what I do for quilting. I felt boxed in by the derivative works statement. So I just want to go back to the statement I made earlier. I like to make all kinds of quilts and there are fusions of old and new, a fusion of experience and inspiration. And actually it all comes together and I make what I really enjoy making. I wanted to encourage everyone to continue to do a little bit of creating every day. It's really what we do every day that adds up to a completed project. It's what we do in those other creative moments that may not be in quilting that we get an idea for sewing, drawing, quilting, knitting even, because that's really where I get mine. And maybe that will be the same for you. Thank you for listening. And I want everyone to have a fabulous week.